saw what these guys were doing it was like it was that same feeling they're doing it for the right reasons that it's a special thing where like you're sacrificing your body you're sacrificing your own paycheck everything to just do it for the love of it I mean you got to do what you got to do to ride have fun I live check to check just to get by to ride my motorcycle you know every dollar every extra dollar that I have goes into the bikes there's a lot that goes into them with you know keeping them maintained you know, tires, oil, I mean, these things aren't made to wheelie and stunt ride like that, so the upkeep on the bikes is, you know, you gotta keep it really uh, frequent. And, uh, oh yeah, I spend a lot of time, a lot of money out of my own pocket, you know, and just, it's my passion, I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, yeah, I'm a When I was a kid, I grew up in Mission Beach uh, in the 90s. It was a crazy, crazy time down there in the beach. And uh, Zinger started SRH back in the day as kind of a surf skate company. And he started sponsoring me when I was a kid. I was probably like 12 years old when I started getting hooked up in clothes from SRH for surfing. So I became friends with Zinger like 20 years ago. And so when I started riding on my Harley and trying to do stunts and shit, I had a group of guys that kind of were teaching me how to do some shit, teaching me how to wheelie and riding with me. And uh, Zinger hit me up. He was like, what's up with you and your friends, man? Killing it on the bikes. I want to get you guys together and, and kind of do a you know, a little team thing again. So, I mean, I had already had the foundation laid with SRH for 20 years, and Zinger was already a close personal friend of mine, so I felt like bringing my friends in uh, and, and making the connection with Zinger and SRH was just like a perfect fit. Where it started from, I mean, a year ago I had 18 inch ape hangers and I was trying to do second gear seat standards down the road because that's all I knew. Uh, as far as the wheelie stuff, it's been coming up on like a year and a half now. Um, I try to ride at least two, three times a week, you know, a couple times after work and then for sure on the weekends. I finally found a group and I, at the time when I bought my bike, I had just gone off a dislocated ankle and fractured tib fib or compound fracture and uh, I saw this Harley at this Thousand Oaks Power Sports and I traded my bike in for that Harley that I'm riding today and I've been on. I don't even have the bike paid off, I have more money into the bike than I have paid it off and I've just found a good solid group of people riding and we try and go at least once or twice a week if not more if the weather is good around here but right now it's tire killing time. 
How's it feel to be overlooked, underrated and hated? Stomach pains in the belly of a city hungry. One of us made it to prominence. Is a mentality of crabs in a barrel. Reality is pretty ugly. But well, let's back up, cause my story ain't a fairy tale, it's really real. Ain't had a chance, I ain't have nothing, I could barely fail. All I have was these neighborhoods I know very well. In a five well, some pages in my diary I would spill. Lyrics on my paper vows surround me, it's on me. I blindly fill my books like a zombie. Measuring these stories with my bare hands. Pictures of this grimy game. I style it like a pallet in a kamikaze plane. A decade of paying dues, now I'm a grown man. I live my life holding death inside my own hands. The kids that I grew up with locked up are inside a box. There ain't no one in here, your only choice is fight a box. The music pushed me through the ghosts is in the hole. Sickness, ferociousness and all The hope is just a watch and overdoses in the horror Suicides and murders, I can't take this shit no more I had these posters on my wall and this music in my room It took me out my world, it would shoot me to the moon Use a fire burning, I'm determined from this high learning Put me on a different road, engine revving tires turning Ever since I'm seven, I just know where I gotta go Trapped in this vicious stone, but I'm back, this is home They say I could've been a star, but I lost my logic My heart is hotter than the bricks in a Boston project Project I've been on Harleys for about five years. I started with a uh, 79 Ironhead and just kind of worked my way up from there. Um, well, I think it's come a long way. I mean, the first, you know, the first guy to like scrape his fender, like that was savage. And then uh, people are scraping their bobbed fenders now and like all that and doing no handed drags and stuff. Like, like the boys out in AZ and up in the Bay Area and stuff. That, and even Joey's doing these no-handers, getting crazy. I mean, it's come a long way. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's amazing, actually. Well, I mean, definitely, um, I've watched all of your videos, literally probably a hundred times each, if you go watch all, all the shit shows, you know, and, and just like you said, like, the top of the game was being able to do a knee knocker or a stand up or a sit down just for miles. And now, you know, you got guys that are on our team that can, on a Harley, drag the hand or drag the ground with both of their hands, you know. So, and that's within, like you said, the last five to six years. So the progression has, has definitely grown. I, I give it probably another two years before the guys are doing pretty much everything on on the cruisers that they can do on sport bikes, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Like the progression of of Harley wheelies and stunts in general is just progressing so fast. You got guys that are. You know, a few years ago, just standard wheelie was like amazing. You know, guys were getting it up there and it was just, people were tripping out. And now you got guys scraping fender, dragging one hand on the ground, doing crazy shit that just doesn't even look possible on a Harley. So the progression level is insane. And just to even be part of the sport and watch these guys killing it is just awesome. I think it's cool. That's, I, I don't like going there, but it's, you know what I mean? It's 15 minutes from my house and they call me and they're like, dude, we got, we got Grunt, we got Shimondo, and you know, it's always some badass photographer that apparently wants to film at Balboa. You know, and it's like, it's right there. You, you pull off the freeway and it's, it's like, it's right there. It's inevitable. So it's, it's super fun, but it's always sketchy. And we shot with you doing through like the main area where people are like walking through. Uh, that was definitely one of the highlights. Yeah, it's pretty cool that we have that spot to ride at, at Balboa, right off the freeway right there, because it's a nighttime spot where we can kind of do our thing and we don't get too harassed by the cops. It's an awesome view. You get to look down on the city and see the lights and everything. And uh, it's just a big empty parking lot where we can get let loose. There's a crazy tunnel that runs over the freeway. It's like a pedestrian bridge that these guys are wheeling right over the freeway in this tight little freaking box. You know, it's crazy. And you pretty much have to see it to really understand. but. That spot's awesome, and that, that we're able to ride at night and fuck around, and then we have a daytime spot down by the border where we fuck around too. Uh, it's just, if we don't have those spots, it's really hard to, to get any kind of practice in because we get in trouble, the cops are hounding us on the streets. So it's definitely key to have a nice riding spot.
I think the fame and the fortune will come eventually, right? And like, I don't think they even know that, right? Like, for them, they're just doing it for the love of it, right? But like, looking into the future, like, the money and the fame and all that stuff will come to them, but like, it, this moment in time when you're doing it for all the reasons of just the pure love of it, that's the most special part for me, right? Uh, my worst crash, I don't know, dude. I've had so many of them. Uh... If you're not if you're not crashing, you're not learning. You know, every time I go out, you know my bike's always on the ground. So there's too many to count. <laughs> Looping a wheelie. Yeah, that sucked. Um, really, kind of just like was still learning at that point, and my feet came off the foot pegs, and just from there, I was instantly looking at the bike scraping down the street as I was like looking up at it on the, my stomach, and like. Rode it home, you know, <laughs> like had to get home somehow. Worst crash I had on the bolt was probably in the last, like, wasn't even a month and a half ago. I just looped out down the 905 spot. I was stuck under the bike. That was pretty rad. I've crashed doing some burnouts and stuff like that. Nothing too serious yet. Went to go pull up a, a second gear stand up wheelie and just pulled it up way too deep and it was going, going a little too fast when I pulled it up and it was started scraping and there's nothing I could do. I mean, I just fucking tossed it, the bike like barrel rolled and bars and fender and struts are all fucked up and it was just bad news. But um, I got the bike back together, threw some pro tapers on it and <laughs> just said, fuck it. You know, I wanted to ride again. I mean, it's a little tweaked, but we're running with it. See how they